4.0 Digital Transformation of Quality Management initiated under the aegis of Industry 4.0 Expert Committee, BCIC. And today's speaker is uh, Mr. Ian Chandramoli, Chairman of Industry 4.0 Expert Committee, BCIC, and uh, CEO of ENCM uh, Management Consultants. I once again welcome all of you, and I request uh, Dr. S. Devarajan, President BCIC, to uh, welcome the uh, participants. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Dave Rajan. First of all, uh, welcome to all of you for this uh, uh, excellent seminar on quality 4.0 by our past president, uh, uh, Chandra Mori san. Uh, see, we always know November is a quality month, right? I think every one of you in your own company must have celebrated this quality month. This quality is every day. It cannot be only this month or uh, this year. The reason is the customer who buys the product always looks at the reliability and consistency of the performance of the product. Whatever it is, whichever product which it meets the purpose, it meets the fitness of purpose, or it meets or exceeds the requirement of the customer. See, we always heard uh, uh, Phil Cosby saying that um, quality is free. I don't know how many of you believe that quality is free. If you really apply quality at every stage, in terms of the planning work, in terms of the manufacturing work, in terms of building the process, delivering the product to the customer, customer service, at, at a reliable and consistent rate, at zero defect or ensure that it's consistent, you save cost. So that has been the, the thing. If you, if, how does it do? Suppose you say the rework is reduced you save cost. If you ensure the first time right, the con quantity is the, pro the product is manufactured, you save cost. So finally, in this competitive world today, everything leads to how competitive we are. Okay, so to ensure that we know there's an importance of the quality level, they should be transparent, correct? The quality, everything should be transparent. The data should be transparent. The process should be transferred. Be able to get the data from the machine, from the fixture, from the measuring instruments. So that for doing what? To make improvement, to reduce the defect, to ensure that it is right first time. So this 4.0, which contributes entirely, I think it's not only on the manufacturing purpose. It has to go into the design of the product, the uh, evaluation of the different processes involved the manufacturing of the, of the product itself and the customer service. So I think we always call it as a 360 degree quality, or in, in other words, ensure that the quality is everywhere and ensure that it touches everyone's point. Similarly, there's a skill quality. How well our quality level of our skill level is increased, how well our knowledge level is increased. So I think you can expand in many other areas. So industry 4.0 doesn't mean only sensors. It means the, the physiology, the psychology of how we deliver the product consistently. And all these things are the means. So how to take the benefit of the means is all left to us. So in this, I think there's no other person better than Chandramoli than who can be able to explain to you in a very simple way because of his vast personal experience, both technical and in terms of bringing the people up. I mean, if you really know Makino, one of the one of the best manufacturing units, Sarag is another uh, example of it, and many other uh, companies which Chandramoli has led to. He's a practical person, so if you see the behind the background, I think he's touched everything: IoT in terms of the touch point, in terms of robotics, in terms of the cloud. I think uh, this is going to be a power-packed um, session. So I think this is getting recorded, sir. So we'll take it for the all the colleges and for the other areas. We look forward for a very interactive session. And uh, once again, thanks to Chandra Mulitan, who is the chair of the IoT. And he leads many of the programs, not only in BCIT, but association and in the skill sets, even the government of India, skill area, Tata skills. I think he brings in the vast areas of experience. So and this is a benefit of BCIT. BCIT has got 850 members and beyond. We have uh, 28 expert committees, and every day there is a seminar going on. So people who are in the in the seminar today, who wish to bring more people into it, 
are welcome to become member of BCIC at rupa at bcic.in and you can also visit our website. There are many, many seminars going on. Next month, next week, there's a seminar on manufacturing conclave. So there'll be a huge amount of uh, uh, interaction with many, many experts. We have a leadership talk on Saturday. So as I told you, uh, there is an interactive uh, chamber. Uh, we always welcome all of you. And once again, thank you, uh, Chandamuri San, for your um, time and uh, patience and ensure that you are so passionate about the subject. We're looking forward to hear from you, learn from you, apply, and get a feedback back to you in terms of how you can support us in making the movement of quality, both in MSMEs and manufacturing sector, service sector, and every other area. Thank you again, once again, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Devrajan, for those kind words. And I think, as you rightly mentioned, the quality is beyond the quality month. So we can have a month key bath, but we cannot have a month key bath. Right? The days of month key bath has to be every month. Thank you, sir. So let me share my file and uh, request to all the audience to put their questions on the text box. And uh, we'll take it up at, uh, say, 12.30. And uh, the Q&A is very, very important. So kindly, please put the questions. Or you can reserve it for the end also, whatever you're comfortable with. Now, when I open the thing, uh, Purushottam or somebody can tell me whether my file is coming up. Visible, sir. Yeah. Visible, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. So, great. So, you are able to see my complete slide, right? Yes, sir. Full screen. Am I, am I also visible to the audience? Because I yes, cannot sir. see myself. Yes, sir. Yeah, I am visible to the audience. Yes, sir. Clear. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the session now, the master class of quality 4.0. I'm sure some of you who participated the previous years would have heard me talking similar things. I try to keep improving, continuous improvement on the same topic. Uh, nevertheless, it's a big subject where different people are participating different times helps a lot. And uh, according to me, the quality 4.0 is a term that reference the future of quality and organizational excellence within the context of industry 4.0. Because the word 4.0 is now become like cliche almost, right? Industry 4.0, which is nothing but the fourth industrial revolution. Let me use a pointer here as to what is the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah, Pushwath, are you able to see my pointer? Yes, sir. Yeah. The fourth industrial revolution, as against the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, is always good to recap this very quickly in 10 seconds. The mechanical industrial revolution, the electrical revolution, which causes mass production feasible, the electronic and IT revolution, where the computerization and CNC control, everything came into the being, again, an industrial revolution. And finally, now in the last five to 10 years, we are talking about the digital revolution, driven by Internet of Things. The backbone of digital revolution is Internet of Things, and along with this twin brother, cyber physical systems, where we do the integration between the IT systems and the operational technologies, IT and OT integration, as we call it. So the Industry 4.0 is a technology-driven fourth revolution. I think the fifth revolution, somebody is raring to ask the question, is nothing but the one where the importance is given to both human and machinery. So therefore, it is almost like an extension of 4.0. You can call it 4.1. In fact, many people wonder why this 0 0.0 is there. It is to create more versions. 4.1 is nothing but Industry 5, 5.0. Anyway, we'll just move on and see more about it. My next slide is coming up, Purushottam. Yes, sir. Right, I won't ask you again, but I think things are sure. moving. So what will be covered? We will cover the traditional aspects of TQM and total cost of quality. 
TCOQ is nothing but the total cost of quality. We will cover the digital transformation of quality management through quality 4.0. And we will touch upon some case studies through videos. I liberally borrow some videos from various sources. And I thank all, the, all of them for the copyright of the videos. So I call them as a quality 4.0 videos and applications. Videos will speak more than my own words. Let's move on. So again, to put it more specifically, cost of quality management, closed loop digital quality control system, underline the word closed loop, PLM, it nothing but end to end, product life cycle management, end to end, which means design to after sales service and manufacturing supply chain fall in between. The complete value chain as it were, from design to after sales service, end to end. How to achieve quality assurance in the entire chain? We call it seamless quality assurance. That means that we are not looking at the silos like production quality, vendor quality, service quality, customer quality. People talk in terms of silos of functional qualities, design quality, you know, material quality. Rather than that, let us look at the end to end quality vision through digital management or digital manufacturing as we call it. And another important subject is, do we look at quality management after the defects happen or even before the defects are produced? We call the proactive quality management. And finally, to do all this, again, we need human beings. We call them as a digital quality manager. There's a new job role, very fast emerging. And I'm sure organizations like TVS, Motor, Toyota, Tata, all looking at hiring these kind of special people, digital quality manager. And what does he, what kind of skills he must have? We'll touch on that point. Let's move on quickly. Are you able to see, Pushottam, twin objectives of quality 4.0? Yes. yes, sir. Right. Am I audible? Yes, sir. So this particular slide, also I left it for you to go through very carefully. What does the slide mean? That always we have to look at the objectives of doing whatever we do. The two objectives of quality 4.0 can be summarized in two simple terms. Number one, higher and improved customer satisfaction. Even if you today the customer is very happy, before you introduce quality 4.0, how to make him more happy? Higher customer satisfaction. You can see this improving circles. Hmm? Although it's becoming red to green, and then green can become bigger green. Eh? Five star, six star, seven star. On the second aspect, on the other hand, of course, customer is very, very happy. But even company cannot make loss. Unless company remains healthy, right? The producing company, I mean the manufacturing company, remains healthy. You cannot satisfy the customer forever. Today you may satisfy him, but tomorrow you cannot. So how to make the company healthy? One big aspect has been found by a great Guruji called Phil Crosby. Devrajans are mentioned. Right? In 1970s, he did a great work on measuring cost of quality. Rather than measuring quality in number of defects, percentage defectives, PPM, and all those numerical things, he said we should measure in monetary terms the value of the cost of power quality. And then he went on to describe, and the other scientists jumped in to describe the cost of quality. We'll touch upon that quickly. There are various types of quality. We'll go into that detail in the next slide. Before that, we will look at, yeah, probably I should go to that. Quality. And then I come back to that. This is a scientist I'm talking about. The total cost of quality was defined by Armand V. Feigenbaum. Armand V. Feigenbaum. Much before even Phil Crosby. And Phil Crosby draw upon this Guruji's wisdom and then wrote a book on quality is free. Hmm? What are the various aspects of this cost of quality? There are only two aspects. First is cost of achieving good quality. Second is cost of poor quality. Hey boss, they look like same. It looks like just a synonym and antonym. No, English language is very, very deceptive. 
carefully read what is below that. Cost of achieving good quality is number one, prevention cost. Phil Crosby said the only system of quality which will be successful in the long run is system of prevention. Not system of sorting, not system of inspection, not system of rejection, repairing, all this will not help. The only system of quality which will be long lasting, sustainable is prevention. Now we have to incur some cost to do the prevention. Yes, of course, we have to have excellent machines, excellent people, trained people, training cost is incurred and the machinery more expensive is better sometimes because it can produce consistent quality. And you have to also look at the cost of fixtures, foolproof fixtures, pokai okay, the cost of tools, which are better than the ordinary tools. So various types of man machine material methods have to be looked at for preventing the quality problems. And those costs, including the design aspect, the better the design, more deeper you do the FEMA analysis and things like that. Yeah, you get more cost incurred at the early stage. And then comes the second point, which is the inspection cost. The appraisal cost is nothing but the inspection cost. The cost of measuring, testing and analyzing. Analyzing is very important. We have to analyze the data. The data aspect comes even here, much before digitalization. We have to measure the data. You cannot have a digitalization without measurement started even before the digitalization. So inspection cost, measuring, testing and analyze called appraisal cost. These two are put together called the cost of achieving good quality. Then what is cost of poor quality? The cost of poor quality is nothing but the rejections, internal failure cost and the warranty and other problems, external failure cost. Look at the details. Internal failure cost includes scrap, rework, process failure, downtime, machine downtime, price reductions. Suppose somebody says, hey, thoda rejection, hai na? okay, second quality, give me 10% less. We have it in the consumer sector. We go to retail market. They give 50% off for second quality. Even in industrial sector, B2B market, such things happen. You want to push out your defective quality, customers just give me a price reduction. Very sad, right? All this put together, internal failure cost and external failure cost, which includes complaints, returns, product comes back, claims, yeah? warranty claims, liability, product liability, indirect liability, direct liability. Yeah? Sometimes it can even result in some major accidents. Airline industry is very famous. We will illustrate soon that point. And of course, the most important is if the customer is not happy with the repeated failures, he is not going to come back for the second order. The repeat order is always not the salesman's achievement. The first order is the salesman's achievement. Second order is from the best reliability and the quality and the serviceability and service support, application support. All this put together are resulting in sales either gained or sales which are lost. Order gained, order lost analysis as we call it. So all this put together in one slide can go for three hours this session. But just summarizing in one slide, the total cost of quality is a sum of cost of achieving good quality and the cost of poor quality, said Armand Feigenbaum. Is it clear? Shotam? Yes, sir. Let's look at this small video. Quality guru Philip B. Crosby wrote, quality is free. Is a volume it's not clear? a gift, but it is free. Yes, what costs sir. money are the unquality things, all the actions that involve not doing jobs right the first time. Cost of quality sounds easy to understand, but unfortunately, many misunderstand it. So let's see if you know the basic definition of cost of quality. Is it the product's price? The cost of not creating a quality product or service? or the total cost of your quality department. If you answer the cost of not creating a quality product or service, you're right. So every time rework is needed when creating a product or providing a service, the cost of quality increases. 
In 2010, when Apple released the iPhone 4, it received a first-hand lesson in cost of quality. The internet buzzed with complaints about the phone's most basic function, calling, and that the phone was consistently dropping calls. While Apple downplayed the issue, customers were loading videos online, demonstrating when a spot on the left side of the case was touched, the signal was interrupted. You can see there is a signal difference between the 3GS and the iPhone 4. And here we go, uh, where I put that bottom corner right in the heel of my left hand. Um, that's when things go bad. And they just kind of switch things around here to show you. It just takes a couple seconds, and uh, we usually lose the, uh, the call. And, you know, there it is right there. We lost the call. And here we are again. I put it back in the left hand, and there it goes. We lost the call. This happened at a bad time for Apple, with its control over the mobile device market facing stiff competition. But after complaints continued, Apple conducted a voluntary recall to fix the issue, at an estimated cost between 131 and 525 million US dollars. A hefty price tag for a timeless lesson. While quality is free, low quality always comes with a price. Over the years, there have been different terms that... Yes. Is the slide visible now? No, sir. Not visible? Not visible, sir. Oh. How is it now? No, yes, sir. No, sir. Was that video clear? Yes, sir, video is clear. Okay. I stopped the video in between because the rest of it uh, is already explained. The main illustration is 525 million US dollar is incurred by Apple because of one very small defect which could not be tested and found even inside their own manufacturing setup. It was only a customer feedback that resulted in it. So imagine the impact of cost of quality to real life organizations. There are other videos about Boeing, Boeing uh, aircraft failure. You are very familiar. There is a documentary in Netflix. You can watch that. How a very small software error or a bug resulted in three aircrafts crashing for what is called the 777 MAX. So there are multiple examples in the various industries and sectors. Now, all this put together, we have to look at what is called the total quality management. And what is total quality management? Simply put, it is total employee empowerment. On the one hand, total quality management means total employee em empowerment. People at all levels, hierarchical levels, from shop floor to top floor, and people at all functions, from design, manufacturing, supply chain, sales and marketing, after sales service, right? People at all functions and people at all levels. If you are able to empower them with a technology, with a technology, right? Not just empower in terms of just our uh, philosophy or our vision. That is not enough. You need to give the tools and techniques for the empowerment. And communication and leadership, you are all very familiar with these eight pillars, right? Three pillars here and five pillars here. What are these eight pillars? Any of you can recall, type in the text box that eight pillars of TQM or eight pillars of ISO 9000. Process orientation, fact-based decisions, customer focus, continual improvement, preventive action, right? And to bring all the five to three pillars by a beautiful strong roof called the system integration. And the icing on the cake is a today's subject. The icing on the cake is a today's subject. Digital quality, which means definition is real time, data driven, proactive, self correcting. Real time means. I must be able to get the data then and there, not after one hour, not after half a day, one day, two days, one week. Real time means instantaneously. I must be able to correct the quality problem. 
it should be fact based decisions data driven right it should be proactive preventive action see the pillar here and proactive it is not even preventive it is proactive which much more faster corrective and preventive action and it doesn't require somebody to come and intervene it is self correcting industry 4.0 has got many technologies which are come in the concept of autonomation autonomation means autonomous correction autonomous automation is called autonomation self correcting so these kind of concepts there are many more concepts put together under the roof called the digital quality very strong roof right and this individually i am not going to explain that but you can see how digital quality can help in process orientation how it can help in fact based decisions how it can help in customer focus tbs motors has done a lot of work in this area quality 4.0 for customer focus continual improvement preventive action communication leadership total employee empowerment and all put together is a house of total quality management the reason i am revisiting this famous 20th century philosophy tqm because many people think our industry 4.0 is a magic it can simply achieve the targets of the manufacturing system without the conventional systems reaching a maturity level my dear friends we cannot do any magic with industry 4.0 we have to have our belief in total quality management before we can even think of driving the same thing through technology so to summarize look at the eight pillars and the three pillars i am underlining are very important elements of quality 4.0 process approach system approach fact based decision making how it is going to happen we will see in the subsequent slides we already seen this we already gone through this now let us look at some statistics we we'll look at some statistics what is the american society of quality is talking about is the research findings are very important before anybody can be convinced that we can invest in industry 4.0 technology to achieve higher levels of customer satisfaction and lower levels of cost of quality the twin objectives which i mentioned earlier always remember the objectives higher levels of customer satisfaction and lower levels of cost of quality are the two objectives now look at this many organizations will have true quality related costs as high as 15 to 20% of the sales revenue and some going as high as 40% of total cost of operations this has been found by the research a general thumb rule is a cost of poor quality in a thriving company in a good company in a well run company like tvs motor like toyota like tata motor that itself will be 10 to 15% of cost of operation while the general average is as high as 40% even a well run company can have a 10 to 15% cost of operation as cost of quality and then they found that quality improvement programs can improve profitability is a opinion stated by almost 50% of the people who are surveyed they all agree yes quality improvement program will result in profitability by reducing this unnecessary wastage called cost of quality however 75% of the surveyors also said that they still did not have a measurement of cost of quality leave alone quality 4.0 even the traditional measurement of cost of quality has not been started or done in a proper way by 75% of the global survey we are talking that is the essence of today's point that if you are going to invest in industry 4.0 without the foundations laid in measurement and control then you can have a disaster of investing big big budgets but with no results this is same thing which is illustrated in a pictorial form yeah are you all able to see this slide uh, purushottam 
positive impact of digital technologies and cost of quality. Yeah. Shama. Any of the audience? Hello. Yes, sir. We can see. We can see, sir. Yeah. Uh, because I came from video back, I just want to ensure. Look at this chart. Total cost of operation and profit, and in between there is a small, yeah, a small box which could be cost of sales, right? Cost of operation, and then there is a cost of marketing and sales. Then leftover is profit. But in this blue line, blue blue portion, one portion is a significant forty percent. I mentioned earlier total cost of quality, and that constitutes external failure, internal failure, appraisal, prevention. Already I explained this. Not to repeat that. Now our effect of doing these projects of measuring cost of quality, and also doing digitalization through four point zero. Is to bring down this portion to a smaller level. Apart from that, there are other projects which will also bring down the total cost of operations. Digital manufacturing can influence this blue portion as well as this yellow portion. But today's focus, we are talking the yellow portion, which is broken down into these red and etc. Only desirable is the prevention cost. Okay, chalo, we can incur cost on that. And even digital manufacturing, quality 4.0 investment is part of the prevention cost. When we are incurring quality 4.0 investment, we should not immediately jump and say, what is the benefit? Please understand, it's a long drawn journey. We have to incur the prevention cost before the benefit accrues, right? Of course, there are experts to prove it to you and give you referrals from various other case studies for you to get convinced. But your own company can do a proof of concept at a limited level, maybe one department, maybe one process, maybe one function. Get convinced, then you scale up to the entire company. All this is incurred in the prevention cost. Even the proof of concept is part of the prevention and appraisal cost. Right? But our aim is to minimize this red box. You see, it's coming crashing. Internal failure, external failure, which is either to 10 to 15 percent, comes crashing to 33 percent, 5 percent, etc. So, again, I'm just evangelizing the same point that the positive impact of digital technologies and cost of quality. Same thing explained in another way only taking the cost of quality on the y axis and looking at the impact of the digital quality programs. What are those programs? We'll come to that. Before that, again, we revisit the concept of the quality 4.0 in a little more academic or a theoretical way for us to get better idea. In a master class, both theory and practice are important. So we will look at some concepts. We we'll look at some case studies. The first, first and foremost concept, already I mentioned 1.0 to 4.0. But in this picture, let us look at this portion, quality systems. We are not looking at enabling technology. We are not looking at production system. We are looking at the quality systems. In the 17th century, 18th century, people were in the cottage era. They were doing the self-inspection. The producer himself checks. Yeah, in, in a way, it is good also, even in the modern days. But you can't do mass production. When producer is checking in great detail. But there's another way of bringing the self inspection in the new era. We'll come to the point. But in the good old days, this was a method. Then, when mass production started, military standards and other things came in, and quality assurance procedures started during the electrical, what is called the mass production era. Then, in 3.0, when uh, electronics and ICT, Internet and communication technologies took over. We have many, many software to monitor quality management systems, to monitor improvement and planning. They took over. That is called the quality 3.0. But what is happening today? Quality 4.0, mass production. 
much more than these three. It is already, as I mentioned, continuous monitoring, proactive and preventive and predictive approach to prevent the problems, closed loop quality. Very important point I'll illustrate shortly. Closed loop quality, self correcting, automation, improvement in quality through digital technologies, and finally, real time data and IoT. So, all this put together results in what we call industry 4.0 driven quality 4.0. What is the benefits? What are the four benefits? The minimum four benefits. Number one, the speed of quality 4.0. It accelerates the responses to issues. That means the corrective and preventive action, COPA, as we call the COPA. In the conventional system, it is not that fast. Somebody is studying the problem. Somebody is trying to root cause analysis. Then take your time to find the various causes. Then find the prioritize the reasons, test the reasons, find out which is the most probable reason. It takes time. Whereas quality 4.0 can result in very fast corrective and preventive action. We'll illustrate later. Second, the data that is provided by quality 4.0 directly results in action. Directly results in action. It is not just a data, lot of data, 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 right? And nobody is working on the data. Thirdly, the customer experience is a focus much more than the traditional systems, both internal customer and external customer. And fourthly, the cost of quality reduces drastically because we are shifting more and more to prevention aspect. The four benefits, right? In other way, we are looking at it. Traditional versus digital quality, right? What are the various parameters of comparing the two? The parameters of comparing traditional quality management versus digital quality management. First is the quality of the data. Second is how do we share the information across functions and across levels? Third is the speed of improvement already touched upon. Fourth, of course, cost of quality. We made a lot of points. And last but not the least, the skills of the quality staff. These are the five measurements against the two systems, traditional TQM, digital TQM. Let's look at how it is. Data quality. In traditional, data is collected sporadically. Sporadically means not continuously. Whenever we want, we collect the data. And by the time we use it, the data is already outdated. It is no more useful because we are too late. Whereas digital quality is collected in real time, then and there, so that you can improve the processes faster. The more you collect at more frequently, more frequently you can take corrective and preventive action. This is the first point. Second point, information sharing. Earlier, we were sharing information. Every department is collecting and keeping with them. It's not at all sharing with other departments. Materials department, design department, production department, maintenance department. Even quality department collects data and keeps it with the quality department. Very seldom it is shared with other departments. Service department data is never shared with manufacturing factories. These are all the examples of the siloed databases. Data keepers. They are like a gatekeepers and they block the information. They feel it's power to have the data is power. So they don't want to let go of the power. That is a traditional quality man. Already TQM is trying to break that barrier. But in digital quality, the barrier is broken automatically. It doesn't require leadership intervention. Why? The stakeholders can access the integrated data. All the stakeholders of all the functions and all levels will access from one single universal truth, right? That's called the database. And the data is flowing from processes, from machines, from people, etc., with no discontinuity, seamlessly. That's the second point, information sharing. Third point, speed of improvement. I think we all are familiar with Monday meetings, right? What happens in Monday meeting? Every Monday morning, we talk the same problem again and again, right? 
I think yesterday you would have done that. Month end also. Month end Monday meeting. Uh, people are more focused on delivery and output target rather than quality. To have a quality month program at the end of the month could be a very, very challenging thing for Bangalore Chamber of Commerce. At the same time, digital quality, Monday meeting is looking only at improvement opportunities. It doesn't even require dwelling upon the problems. The speed of improvement is so fast. The cost of quality. Already mentioned about the various costs of quality, which are done in the traditional way. But in the digital way, it is already built in. Audits are built in. Testing procedures are built in. Appraisals are built in. All embedded in the system. And last but not the least, the skills of the quality staff. Yeah, traditional people keep on inspecting, testing, recording, calibration, very, very traditional. Whereas here, even the worker operator himself is looking at, smart worker is himself looking at prevention through data analysis with the help of Internet of Things, IoT, and development of appropriate applications, app development. How does all this happen? Some videos we will see now. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Is the volume audible? No, sir. No, sound sir. is not coming. Oh, no, volume sir. is not audible. Yes. Oh, sorry. Is it audible now? Yes, sir. Oh, good. Assembly lines today feature multiple parallel activities, no, automation, video, and digitalization. This means notes, new challenges in the whole quality the process. 12 30, 12 yeah? Atlas Copco's QA Platform 4.0 is the answer to combine new manufacturing techniques with higher quality to achieve real smart connected solutions. Data and statistics from all data collectors are merged and analyzed with QA supervisor software to schedule routes and monitor the complete quality process. The personalized dashboard of QA Supervisor software provides a clear and immediate overview of the quality process, allowing the quality manager to easily monitor and assign tasks to the operators. The operator receives his tasks online on his device, enabling direct communication with the quality manager. QA Platform 4.0 can standardize and digitalize your process and also provide operator guidance during the tests. A mobile device enables the flexibility of the operator. Alternatively, a smaller ST Palm can be used. Many tests in a factory are performed visually, such as optical inspections and OK Not OK. The tool check operations can be performed with a high level of flexibility. The ST bench can replicate the exact behavior of the real joints in the production line, providing reliable acceptance criteria for the validation. The ST pad is easily docked on an ST bench for immediate testing. The ST bench guides the operator, highlighting the brake to be used. The ST bench is equipped with all the accessories necessary for test execution. Starting the test is simple and execution is fast, increasing productivity for machine capability tests. The joint check procedures are displayed on the ST pad. Clear instructions show how to perform the tasks. The combination of ST pad and ST wrench with its patented algorithm for real-time residual torque detection provides the most comprehensive solution for joint checks. The QA Platform 4.0 also includes non-torque related inspections. Just one example is the dimensional check that can be scheduled and performed automatically. The interface guides the operator and the data is stored on the ST pad, eliminating human error and sent to the QA supervisor. If fixtures have to be tested during production, a simple way is to use an IRC Connect, a new way of making your transducers smart and wirelessly communicating even in offline mode. With storage capacity of up to 5,000 measurements 
and the possibility to operate remotely in dangerous areas. The operator is guided through the scheduled test intervals. If defects appear or condition has to be documented, the integrated camera can be used effectively to record images in the database. All quality-related inspections have been performed using the QA 4.0 platform, ensuring the highest quality of the assembled product. The quality manager can deeply analyze all the tests performed and monitor the history of every single detail of the process. Final check is OK and another car of the highest quality is released to delight its customer on the road. This is quality assurance in a new light. The QA Platform 4.0 from Atlas. Okay. You all enjoyed that video? Yes, sir. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. We can hear you. All of you enjoyed the video? Yeah, great. Okay. So let's move on. Now, I think the foundation is laid on today's topic. I'm sure by now you all are convinced with the two case studies and whatnot. And we'll now move on to the second gear, or third gear. The fundamental principles are included in the concept of proactive and closed loop process quality control. I keep using these words again and again. Let us see what it means. There's a great guy called Joseph Juran. He mentioned that the key elements of quality management system is three-step process. Designing of the process, development of the control system, and continuously improve. The process has to be measured, have a control system to monitor the deviation, poor performance. But after doing the control, it's not good enough. Then you have to start improving also, for which you need a breakthrough systems. So this is a Joseph Juran said in 1960s. Let's move on. Now, how do we link that to the quality 4.0? Look at this. This is a Joseph Juran, right? Elderly man. This particular slide you can go on for an hour. I'll just take only 30 seconds. Quality planning, that means design of the quality systems. Quality control, that means measurement and monitoring. And quality improvement. The third bucket is extremely important. So far, I think we are done reasonably well on these three. But can we use the technology to do it faster, better, and cheaper? Can we use digital technologies to analyze the problems, to diagnose the problems? to find the root causes, to predict the next steps and the next situation. The next failure can be predicted. Can we prescribe the actions even before the failure happens? And of course, visualize all the data on dashboards. If you are able to do this, the trilogy of Juron, the three-step process which we mentioned, yeah, planning and control and improvement, planning, control and improvement are the three steps, can be done in a more effective way, more cost-effective way compared to the conventional system. This is an illustration how to we do that. Introduce a digital app even during the design stage. I saw this in 2012 or 14 in Tafe Tractor Company in Dodabalapur, Bangalore. Every operator had an iPad and he had the operational Procedure, he had this quality measurement parameters and he also had some instructions of what to do, what not to do. All this was there in the every operator in the hand, in the tablet. 2014, I'm talking, long before even people came to know Industry 4.0. And with that, if you are able to control many, many digital data acquisition systems, Bluetooth enabled vernier caliper, right? And so on and so forth. Then we can really use IoT, yeah? Internet of Things. In this individual tablet data can be amalgamated and integrated 
at a central supervisory control system right skada by the quality manager i don't mean skada driven by some production manager or something we are talking about as quality managers skada and using that improvement with the real time data the difference between then and now i already told five differences one of the most important difference is real time data then and there no delay no time delay no latency and using the analytical framework already touched upon descriptive diagnostic predictive prescriptive what happened why it happened what will happen what action to take and using seven qc tools the famous seven qc tools hmm? process flow diagram check sheet histogram pareto diagram root cause analysis uh, scatter diagram and control chart this is seven qc tools famous and all this seven qc tools if you are able to digitalize if each one of them can be leveraged through digital technology internet enabled digital technology we can certainly achieve what we aimed for real time data driven proactive decision making the decision making by the quality managers or the production engineers or the production technicians is much faster compared to the past i will skip this then we'll move on to okay let's this is a very interesting video have a look at it the, the digital coming. revolution is impacting every single sector of the economy. It is now transforming the manufacturing industry. There are opportunities Audio. in every part of the manufacturing value yes, chain, R&D, production, supply chain or procurement. Smart interfaces are invading shop floors as the technology costs history. are decreasing sharply. Over the last 10 years, sensor costs have been divided by 10 and data storage costs have been divided by 40. Combined with the increasing software maturity, this paves the way for a digital manufacturing revolution. It could be any in a manufacturing industry. environment, non-quality means extra costs industry. and a drop in customer satisfaction. On average, non-quality amounts for more than 2% of sales revenue, mainly due to scrapping a rework. The concepts are common to across sectors. Cloud connected machines, big data and analytics open a new horizon of opportunities to understand the underlying causes of non-quality within the manufacturing processes and drastically reduce the associated costs. The benefits are huge across the entire value chain with a payback within two years. To make it happen, there are many critical success factors to take into account. Because this initiative, we were collecting manually the data which take a long time and do not allow us to react on time at the right moment and it generate scrap. Predictive quality is one of the golden nuggets in the digital manufacturing revolution. Predictive quality leverages the internet of things, sensors, big data and analytics to reduce scrap and rework by up to 20% while reducing raw material consumption by up to 5%. How to proceed? First, we collect and store raw data. Gather quality data from every product at different stage of the lines. Gather process data from all machines and sensors. Gather traceability data. Second, we analyze and correlate those data leveraging specialized analytic tools. The analysis and interpretation are performed by process engineers with the support of data scientists, and this leads to novel insights and action plans. Third, we visualize insights on simple dashboards. It is time to act. We take concrete actions such as changing the machine configuration, adapting line organization, or replacing tools. We then monitor and adapt the standards periodically to the best performing practices. This project should be implemented everywhere where today we need to be focused on the scrap rate reduction as a top priority. This is well, so nice video on digital manufacturing is an Italian experience cap gemini they have done it across the various industries as you saw leather garment industry textile garment industry engineering industry sheet metal industry the basic principle is explained in this next two slides we have to identify critical to quality parameters ctq critical to quality parameters at every stage at every stage of the input of the process and the output of the process for every process, there is an input, there are procedures inside the process, and there is an output. Not only input output at the end to end of the process chain, 
but individual process also has got a input and output if all this can be measured to digital technologies and using the cloud and other methods if you are able to analyze and give a feedback that's in the next slide analyze and give a feedback the feedback loop you see the feedback loop very very important establish the standards standards mean baseline performance monitor the actual performance compare actual and standard critical to quality targets suppose you are measuring let us say the diameter and the diameter is supposed to be plus minus 50 micron and that is the baseline performance but actual performance is it is crossing 50 micron is going to 70 micron so 70 micron compared to 50 micron you have to take a action and if the action is taken instantaneously instantaneously mean i am not talking about 100% zero latency there could be some latency suppose the latency is let us say 30 seconds then the production of last 30 seconds or at the risk but if the latency is 30 minutes then the production of the last 30 minutes are at risk if the production is that corrective action is taken after 3 hours then the production of the last 3 hours is at risk so the faster we take the measurement and take corrective and preventive action through cyber physical systems through cyber physical systems hmm? these are technologies which require a very deep uh, master class and i am giving the principles principle is quick corrective action preventive action and then you can get the results will be coming closer to the baseline performance that means the standards every time our aim is to bring back to the standards that's called the control box so what all the apps can do the apps can create test iterate and improve that means continual improvement the apps help you to do continual improvement this is a cycle production like a murugappa group or hero hero group secondly it is visual the operator can see easily user friendly thirdly it is connected with machines tools and sensors including metrology instruments including renisha including callsize including marpos the renisha in terms of probing online probing marpos in terms of secondary gauging cmm callsize all this connected through iot right and data driven an interactive logic that means every process interacting with each other and along with that it is also interacting with the standards so these are called the manufacturing apps or quality related apps now if you are able to introduce in every process right earlier we saw the traditional system this is a traditional system where we are not started digitalizing and the close loop quality control then we discuss the apps suppose we superimpose apps on every process measure the ctq through the through the digital system right and improve upon it through corrective and preventive action then what happens at every stage there is a close loop there is a close loop here there is a close loop here there is a close loop here there is a close loop. there is a overall close loop from end to end and in that case these are the digital acquisition tools right there is one such tool another tool another tool these are the digital acquisition tools right and then in that methodology the planning measurement and control the loop gets completed the jurons trilogy of identifying the mistakes in our operations faster detection of errors and improvement to minimize for further inspection and that is called the process optimization this whole thing is called process optimization hmm? these are very obvious things so i am moving faster now you can introduce this in the work instruction i have seen in siemens siemens bombay i have seen work instructions have been digitalized they are put into an rfid rfid box where inside there is a switch gear kept inside every rfid box there is a switch gear kept and the measurement sorry the, the bill of material of that switch gear the assembly process to make that switch gear and the input and output quality parameters 
CTQ, critical to quality, all these are embedded in the RFID box, right? And so work instructions can be digitalized, inspection procedures can be digitalized, audits, sampling audits can be digitalized, right? Even sampling can be digitalized, Kaizen improvements can be digitalized, machine maintenance, machine contributes to the major problem of quality. So man, machine, material methods, all of them, if you are digitalizing, you are able to get a complete total quality management through digital applications. Let's look at one video, real-time quality monitoring. The scope of this tailor-made Industry 4.0 solution is to provide real-time information about the production status to the stakeholders, the sound is from management to production level, and at the yes, same sir. time to automatically trace, yes, sir, manage, and monitor the quality of products. To achieve these goals, the manufacturing production line has been retrofitted with sensors and digital devices enabling data capture and visualization of production and quality KPIs. Each station has been equipped with a barcode scanner, connected to a tablet running a custom application. Through the tablet application, the system identifies each assembled product and shows information needed by the worker. In this way, the system keeps track of each product and calculates real-time production KPIs and shows them on line production monitors. Workers can assign quality defects to each product reducing paper consumption and improving quality data tracking and overall accuracy. To reduce the line defectiveness, the system triggers alerts to enable quick reactions. A dedicated desktop application has been designed to provide quality and production real-time information to plant managers and to support decision-making. Additionally, historical production data enables the analysis of the overall quality management process. just a quick recap of how digital quality is implemented in a what is called white goods industry. What you saw in the previous video is a white goods industry. Mm -hmm. But the main emphasis is a real-time quality measurement. That is the emphasis in that video. Each video has got certain specific learning. I hope you made a note of it. Let's move on and see how this Siemens Bombay example I mentioned is typically done and the for information, this line is produced and deployed by Titan Automation, Tata Group company. Titan Automation has deployed it, designed along with conveyor automation, assembly automation, digitalization, RFID, etc., and installed at Siemens Bombay. I have personally visited it. 150 varieties of switch gear are measured both in terms of production monitoring as well as quality monitoring, and they brought down the rejections closer to zero defect, closer to zero defect. In an electrical industry, they target zero defect because the switch gear and all these things, they can create very big safety problems in the customer place. So therefore, they always aim for zero PPM. Maybe one or two by mistake, it can go. It varies human as we say. But when you introduce digital technology, even the human error is eliminated. So they bring into really zero defect which is what I've seen in Siemens Kalva line. 150 varieties of switch gear with different voltage current ratings, right? Look at the various technologies used, vision-based technology, RFID technology, identification, automatic identification of an inspection before and after the assembly operations, 
right? This is a kind of a pictorial representation of that. Now, to summarize what we saw there, IoT and RFID technologies can be employed to track the items. To track the items. You can't have a wrong bill of material, wrong procedure applied to the wrong part. There are 150 varieties. Each variety has got a different bill of material, different assembly process, different input quality and output quality parameters. Right? So you have to track each one of them in a conveyor line where mixed model is being produced. Mixed model assembly. Japanese, they call it Aijunka, which means it is not one batch of all single product going on Monday, another product going on Tuesday. No. In within one hour, any of the 150 parts variety can go through the line. In fact, TVS Motor is trying to do this even in two-wheeler assembly. Additional capable full component process history. The process history is maintained, is stored in that RFID and that finally in the cloud. So that if there is a feedback from the end user, we can still get traceability and corrective and preventive action. Root cause analysis is possible. That's one example. Second one is digital technologies can be used for dimension measuring, detection of errors. You saw in the several videos, dynamic status identification of product and detection of the correct part for the assembly process. I visited a company in Chennai, always quote this example. 200 varieties of clutches and brakes are being produced by one factory for around 20 tractor customers. Each customer average 10 types of clutches and brakes. 20 into 10, 200 varieties. 200 varieties are being produced. But the correct part, the springs, the child parts, are fed into the assembly process through digital technology, right? And this is an example which we can see in various tier one, tier two, tier three industries in the automotive, electrical engineering, and other industries. And to summarize all this, vision systems, some items we cannot see by measurement. You need to have a camera based vision system, right? Especially in garment industry, leather industry, textile industry. Measurements are extremely difficult. So go by vision system. My friend in Lagu Udyog Bharati, he has got a factory now in Dodabalapur as well as Mysore Road. We are planning to visit that in January. There you can see visual systems aiding the operators. Control system PLC, all this put together. The data is analyzed in the cloud and fed back. Yeah, not going into the detail, but this is again. Eh? Now coming to the last portion of my module is a proactive quality. We will try to see if we can finish by 12.30. If not, five minutes will over. Then we take questions. The proactive quality is an extremely important subject. It involves three-step action across four sources, four resources, not sources, resources. What are the four resources? Man, machine, material, methods. And what are the three approaches? Quality through detection at source. Quality through automation, quality through usage monitoring. So three into four, that means there are 12 possible opportunities. 12 possible opportunities, which means if you take the man, how to detect, is a man making the mistake? How to detect the quality detection at the man level? I was working in a company called Cooper Busman in Pondicherry. That time, 2001. 2000-2001, there was no IoT kind of system. But still we had the basics of the IoT. We had every man had a, what is called the ribbon in his hand, which had a barcode. Or his own operator card has got a barcode, which he affixes. There's a label gun and he affixes. So if there is any problem at the end of the line or from the customer, we can trace it back to the man. Quality through detection at source. So it doesn't mean that we can only look at equipments and machinery in the 4.0 era. Even man can be controlled through barcoding and other methodologies. These are called the wearable systems. You can have a wearable with a man, his own mobile phone. The mobile phone in the hands of the man becomes an identification traceable system, right? Because every man can have a mobile number or identification. 
right? Like an Aadhaar card, machines, materials. I gave you the example of the Siemens. Every switch gear going into the RFID box is connected through digitally for monitoring the materials, child parts going into the switch gear, the process to assemble it, the method, the process to assemble it, the method, and the particular machine which will assemble that switch gear. Same, all machines are not identical. There are different small, all pneumatic machines, small, small pneumatic machines. Even in my experience of Cooper Busman, many, many pneumatic presses. Even in Siemens, Kalva, many, many pneumatic presses. Electrical industry, they use a lot of pneumatic presses. And how do we connect all these four with each other? It's a big challenge. So I call it as a smart forum. Smart forum. Forum means man, machine, material methods. Digitally connected. And how do we use these three? We'll see quickly three examples. Usage monitoring. Automation. I'll explain that. Quality detection at source. Right? Through instrumentation and monitoring of the production equipment, manufacturers can detect when the equipment calibration is drifting beyond the required settings that could result in assembly components and products that do not meet specification. Equipment calibration is a very important point. But we cannot calibrate an equipment off the line. We have to calibrate the equipment online. You see this next picture I will show you. The online calibration of equipment. An example is Renisha. Renisha has got a new concept. You see this, there is one small robo picture. Yeah, this one. And that is called an online monitoring of the process through a probing mechanism. And immediately the feedback is given to the machine through a machine tending automation. In process inspection, and giving feedback to the machine machine through a machine tending automation. And then create a closed loop quality control. Again, I talked earlier also, I'm illustrating with more examples. 3D metrology. 3D metrology can be used not only at the design stage, but can be used even in the after sales service. And feedback into the manufacturing process. Right? There is a famous company called Amitech, American company, who masters in this area. Point I'm making is, these are the measurement systems which helps us to detect at source. When I mean at source, it is not at the inspection stage, but it is at the production stage. The process itself is getting measured continuously, right, by an online measurement system. And ability to monitor both equipment settings and the results. See, there are two things. You have to measure the settings. That's a calibration part. And the results, which is the inspection part. Don't get confused between the two. Calibration can be digitized. Inspection can be digitized. When both are digitized, we get a fantastic quality assurance for the manufacturer. Right? This is a big subject by itself. Let's move on to the next point. There are three things I said. Quality at source, quality through automation. Beyond monitoring, many manufacturers are beginning to employ robotics as a means to improve process quality. The other day I talked about automation for achieving consistent quality. One month before we had a class. Automation to achieve consistent quality. Across the country today, both small and medium enterprise, larger companies, everybody is looking at automation to achieve consistent quality. There is a wrong understanding that robots are used to improve productivity and eliminate human being. No. It is mainly to achieve consistent quality. For example, the car body, the car body, I will show you a video probably. The car body production, today it is completely robotized. Whether it is a Maruti Suzuki or a Toyota or a Tata Motor, all the companies in North, West and South have completely robotized the car body welding and the car body painting. These two processes completely automated. Why? Not to eliminate the manpower but achieve absolutely consistent quality. The second thing is, there are some aspects which have to be dynamically improved. For example, you take welding. You cannot finish the welding and try to repair it. Imagine the entire core body is lost. If the welding is defective, 
whole core body has to be thrown away. You have to correct it then and there by an automation system which can even use what is called machine learning algorithms. Machine learning algorithms, ML, also is part of the AI. Artificial intelligence is a big subject, but machine learning algorithm is a subset of it. That is what I mean by applying cognitive technologies to continually learning to improve. And I visited Toyota Corporation, Bidadi. I literally saw how vision-based technology is used to measure the welding quality as the welding is going on dynamically and feedback is given to the welding current, voltage, and the feeding of the wire, et cetera, et cetera. Orc welding. A famous company called Fronius, Austrian company, is mastering the subject of robotic welding together with metrology measurement while the production is going on. So quality through automation, very important subject. So what are the two pillars of automation? Flexible automation, using a very, very flexible robots and intelligent automation. We are talking today the subject of intelligent automation, which is IoT driven automation, right? How do we use sensors and data acquisition methodology to give a feedback, right? So that there is a self-correcting approach. We are not reached that ultimate self-correcting, but there is an approach to the self-correcting, autonomous methodology, right? The intelligent automation is tending towards autonomous correction. There are many examples, but I don't want to labor on this. It could be even in basic cycle production. It could be in a paint shop. It could be in assembly line using Kobos. It could be in the warehouse. It could be the car body welding, as I mentioned. In all these examples, the dull, the dirty, the dangerous, right? And difficult and distancing. The dull jobs like a cycle assembly, the dirty jobs like painting, the difficult jobs like the packing, the, the dangerous jobs like the welding and for social distancing like the assembly line during the pandemic, COVID. All these are examples of how automation can be used. One video and then we will move on to Q&A after that. How the Ford body Ford's automotive body. ATS ADOS is the audio smart clear? manufacturing and industry yes, sir, clear. software suite. Yeah, I'm not able to hear. One way ATS ADOS Are you able to hear? Used is to check overall dimensional body performance. Is it feeble or normal? Gap and flush and door closing. Right, it's good. It's good. Oh, great. Gap and flush measurement is easy to learn and is repeatable as it is guided with simple visuals whilst being supported. You will see by how algorithm. smart devices are used an average of just to measure the gap, each the section. flush. The door closing velocity and tools, force. It is only possible to measure a fraction of the door closing performance. With ATS ADOS, however, manufacturers can visualize 100% of their performance. I'm sure our Indian industry is also using similar technology. Connectivity to the execution level, all measured data is traceable by vehicle identification number. Vehicles with low performance are automatically blocked from shipment, a perfect error proofing system. If desired, repair tasks can be automatically assigned to all blocked vehicles and repair costs will be recorded. For process improvement teams, all relevant data is intelligently delivered. This company called ATS Ado has created several smart devices quality indicators relating to, to speed up the inspection methods. ATS ADOS, the versatile software And the data from the inspection is automatically fed. You can see the cabled devices, but you can even do without cabling by using Bluetooth methodology. Well, we'll move on. So the third aspect of proactive quality, right, is to use usage monitoring. What is usage monitoring? Nothing but customer level. After sales service data. The usage means at the customer place in the field, monitoring the usage in the field, the early detection, suppose two-wheeler industry, TVS Motor is launching a new two-wheeler, new model. If they get the feedback from the field through digital system, rather than the normal conventional, not like that, just instantaneous feedback mechanism through IoT. That is why in the electrical scooters, they already incorporated IoT in every scooter. 
every scooter electrical vehicle now they are automatically incorporating i am not sure whether the conventional scooters also they incorporating petrol vehicle but in electrical i am 100% sure iot is already part of the electrical scooters maybe in electrical cars also ev and then this data based on the product performance potentially alerting not only customer service warranty management but also the product design then it goes back to the manufacturer and what are they doing they are using sensors intelligence and connectivity these are three technologies sensors obviously that's where the measurement happens connectivity because the data has to flow intelligence or the edge devices the softwares of the edge devices measuring it and all these are fed back to even the machine the scooter design person the true plm approach product life cycle management in the true sense plm 4.0 we call it and early detection before even 10000 scooters are running you are able to bring a early warning system and ibm is one of the companies who are uh, uh, very popular in this area in america definitely bringing an early warning system they got detecting the quality issues earlier monitoring the product quality monitoring the process quality and bringing low false alarm that is you should not create some false alarms there should be a genuine alarms and using the cloud so the data is coming from the field see 10000 scooters 1 million scooters means you cannot use ordinary storage systems or ordinary processing software systems you need to have the latest big data and the cloud based technologies all these are coming in the concept of the third aspect of proactive quality as we call it yeah basically how do we use usage monitoring at the field level to improve the quality so in other words there are three things i mentioned yeah and then all these are put together in the concept of predictive analytics i am not going to touch on this welcome to asq right so basically three things the usage monitoring is the third one automation is the second one and the first one is using smart connectivity of man machine material methods right that means you are lo- you finding the quality problem detecting and correcting at the source using dynamic measurements so all these technologies put together is giving you a what is called a proactive proactive approach to the quality management system which co- traditional management system we are not able to achieve right so we are using the tools of digital 4.0 in improving our tqm approach tqm cannot vanish you are augmenting the tqm you are enhancing the tqm but if you are doing that you have to take the people along you cannot achieve the tqm without or the quality 4.0 without training our own people what are the various things people plus process plus quality 4.0 technology all put together makes a success i am almost ending my class now point i am making is quality professionals are required to manage the quality with the digital tools so we have teach them what are the digital tools we have teach them how the software can be deployed they may not be able to design the software but how to apply the software how to deploy it and achieve excellence through quality management and the digital language what is iot what is cyber physical system the digital language what is machine learning algorithm we have to teach many many things on the concept level and to some extent in the practical level also that means we have developed quality professionals at what level we have to develop quality professionals at the grassroots level technician level at the level of the supervisors at the level of super, uh, managers at the level of engineers across functions manufacturing engineering quality engineering production engineering design engineering after sales service engineering across the functions and across the levels we have to create digital champions the digital champions in my opinion must have minimum five characteristics the number one is system thinking they should be able to think of the holistic picture of the quality problem not any one silo 
they should be convinced of using data driven decision making they should be data literate data literacy very important they should have the leadership for learning everybody should look at continuous learning and continuous improvement and finally they must have a good understanding of how the decisions will affect people or vice versa people are affecting decisions so therefore a digital quality manager to summarize he will be able to augment improve upon human intelligence he will be able to increase the speed and quality of decision making he will be able to improve transparency traceability and auditability right that was my alarm at 12:30 he will be able to anticipate changes reveal the prejudice adapt to new circumstances and knowledge he will be able to evolve relationships organizational boundaries a concept of trust to reveal the opportunities for continuous improvement and new business models he will be able to learn how to learn by cultivating self awareness and other other awareness as skills so to summarize if any of you are interested in implementing quality 4.0 you need to look at these five things map out the value chain across the functions from the customer being the center of focus right identify the most impactful opportunities low hanging fruits how to motivate by getting some benefits quickly then we can scale up to the rest of them. the proof of concept is very important already mentioned to you use of analytics to get the buy in use some data analytics convince the people and yes data is very important finally culture the culture of the people is very important otherwise they'll say are to kya hota kuch nahi hota rejections are keep on happening nobody is bothered so i acknowledge my gurus juron asq american society of quality juron institute of quality is called tulip now these american people and many case studies ibm capgemini ford from offer i didn't show you augmented reality project atlas copco and many many thank you very much and uh, now i will unshare and uh, the video will be sent to all of you those who registered participants can see and also we can stop sharing okay ladies and gentlemen 12:30 was my hot stop now over to you half an hour lot of questions you must be having okay should i read the questions or uh, purushottam can you open up the thing audio video for the people ओपन No. Yes, sir. Oh, one point very I want to looking. highlight. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, one point I want to highlight is why quality is required. The Go quality ahead, management, ah, uh, it is primarily to aid the customers, yep. uh, to, you know, pick up things like if uh, you know it is adhering to some standards, whether it is uh, industrial grade or mill grade or maybe the commercial grade. uh no they don't have to look here and there uh, to sir you are locked your audio is locked again yeah now the point is uh, you know all this evolved around one aspect it is for customer satisfaction sure. how it can aid so that has to be brought in mind uh, by the people now why uh, artificial intelligence is having a problem now so far 
you know we have not been successful in devising a standard for artificial intelligence uh, even though software development has been done uh, artificial intelligence is evolving i hope soon it will now what will happen is you know mr chandramouli will claim that his artificial intelligence is superb i will claim that it is better than chandramouli somebody else will claim that and the customer is left to confusion as to what which one to choose this has to be avoided and this can be very well effectively avoided by only your quality assurance procedures so that is why the quality management 4.0 is essentially required for all industries thank you sir any question from thank your you. side or it is a no no it is only a comment which uh, comment. No, you have covered it uh, very nicely uh, you, absolutely <laughs> you know all aspects have been covered thank you thank you sir thank you i, I wanted to add uh, this point why oh, is required no see yeah. machine learning algorithm is now very popular in the retail industry ml ml is used in the retail industry because they have got millions of data last week we saw somebody presented about retail industry right mr swaminathan now yeah. manufacturing industry from the customer field data not in the shop floor but the customer field data is also moving in the direction of the high volume high velocity data so we have to depend on new technologies tvs yes. tvs motor has got 10 types of scooters or maybe more so how do they monitor the quality of all these scooters when they are number 1 or number 2 in the country i think every 10 seconds they or maybe i don't know devrajan sir is there every 10 seconds one scooter they are producing yeah so a truly high volume high variety manufacturing devrajan sir how many scooters are produced every second so he is not there okay good any other question from anybody if there are no question we can have early lunch yeah Oh, Magesh, he is again giving vote of thanks, sir. We want our questions. Magesh is giving vote of thanks. Right? Any questions from anybody? Gauru Sarup, sir, go ahead, sir. Pleasure sir, to have you today. All, first of all, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. You can even open the video. First of all, thank you so much for such a brilliant, uh, you know, lecture. Thank you, sir. You really, you really covered all the bases. There is hardly any question which comes to mind immediately, because because we I I, I have to go over all this matter once more to you know prize out some questions. One thought which came to me was that uh, this quality 4.0 is the need of the hour for thousands and thousands of. uh you know tier 1 tier 2 companies and are there any good uh, organizations or consultants who focus on uh, implementing quality 4.0 on shop floors yes yes there are <coughs> we can connect you with them <coughs> yes there are many organizations okay thank you sir. both multinationals thank and you, startup ventures and uh, so mr gaurav swarup in the machine tool industry is one of the few examples in the country mr gaurav swarup is md of marshall cnc he is the first one to introduce closed loop quality control right but he still looking at some more learning in that so that is a championship that is a continuous learning right everybody looking for new learning opportunities definitely sir we'll connect you with the experts on this area any other question there are 33 people in the call i mean it's a 100% attendance today like rajasthan voting huh? or chatisgarh voting we got 35 people registered 33 people attendance that's good here purushottam originally we planned to do physical program but that is very difficult in a working day hmm? so we convert to online program any other question from anybody
Some people are just joining now. The end of the master class. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing wrong. Many people are interested in Q&A session only, not in the session. Well, well, well. Either my class has completely confused everybody or completely convinced everybody. I'm not sure. Okay. Saju, sir, ABB. How yes, can sir. my co-chair Saju will not have any question? Saju, sir, any question? No, sir. Actually, most of the things uh, what you are showing, we are already is, is work in progress or, or is in our basket or to-do list for the future. ABB is already implementing. So, yeah. My master class is redundant for ABB. Thank you, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Anyway, no, there were a lot of things ABB. to learn from that also. So we'll, okay, in, a, in our to-do list, many things to be added from your seminar. So I was listening very carefully. I didn't even miss a full stop or comma of your presentation. <laughs> Saju is a walking library of digital manufacturing. Thank you, Saju. Uh, Thank you, so if there are no other questions, we can have early lunch. Yeah? Colonel Prasad ji. Yeah, Great yeah. to see you in every forum, asking the relevant <laughs> questions. I think our good friend, uh, uh, Dr. Nair. Huh? We met last Nair. time. Nair, Nair, yeah, Dr. Nair. Yeah. So he's missing today. Is he there today? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's not there. <laughs> uh, because he's actually the production man. Colonel Hari Prasad is a field person. So between them, you know, they make a powerful defense combination. <laughs> They defend each I other. I was a quality assurance officer. <laughs> ah, correct, correct. And you are a great person in electronics and communication. Sir, you are, the time has come for you to conduct your webinar oh, on how to God. deploy electronics and communication for quality management. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I think, Purushottam, there seem to be no questions. If everybody can come on the video. Oh, there's a new slide. Go ahead, Pushottam. What do you want to say? Oh, there is a question from somebody. One MB is asking a question. MB. MB must be Mahesh Bhupati. Yeah? Let us know FMEA process can be implemented. So the issues can be eliminated before we start. Yes, yes, yes. Mahesh Bhupati. Absolutely, yes. Failure mode effectivity analysis. Failure mode effectivity analysis can be implemented, right? It is part of the pro proactive quality management. If you can bring in at the design stage or at the prototype stage of any product, right? These concepts can be implemented at a early warning system. Yes, the answer is yes, but I'm not getting into the technology detail. FMEA process, definitely. Ponduranga sir says fantastic session. Thank you, sir. Any other, or if you have a mass video shoot, Purushottam, thank you, sir. Goroji, mass video shoot. Sandil Kumar, from which company? I don't know. Yeah. Yes, Purushottam. Already click. Okay. Ten sir. Photo okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. I think it's a month end, so all of you will be very, very busy in month end production. <laughs> Vanakkam, sir. Vanakkam. Thank you very much. It was one thank of you, the thank best. You, thank you. One of the best. One more point. One more point I wanted to add. Oh, one more point. Yeah. Sandra Mohli, I mean, uh, Nishu emphasis on one point. This quality aspect is to be considered as a culture. Yeah, I made that point at the end. Yeah, you have, you have mentioned that was culture. as a passing remark, but that is the most important thing. It has Absolutely. to be a culture. Yep. Very true. It has to be a movement. It has to be a passion. It has to be a culture. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Colonel. <laughs> Thank okay. You. So we all set. 
Yeah. Early lunch and month end targets are very important. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, sir. Good day.